Hey guys, hope you're having a great day today. My name is Steve. Thank you so much for stopping by my channel. Today we're going to be riding to a place called the Strid. This is supposedly the most dangerous stretch of river on Earth. I have no idea what makes this stretch of river so dangerous, but based off the thumbnails that I'm seeing on YouTube, it really doesn't look that dangerous. It looks like a fairly calm stretch of water, so I'm really curious what makes this stretch of river so dangerous. But anyways, guys, this stretch of river called the Strid is a section of a river called River Wharf or Werf, W-H-A-R-F-E. And uh, this is somewhere in North Yorkshire, England. So anyways, guys, I have no idea what to expect here, but I'm very intrigued about what makes this so dangerous, what makes this stretch of river so dangerous. But anyways, guys, enough rambling for me. Let's go ahead and dive in and check out the most dangerous stretch of river on Earth. The Strid. Some say that this small stretch of river in Yorkshire has a 100% fatality rate. 100% fatality the misfortune rate. To dunk themselves in that fizzy brown water isn't coming out alive. Some say that in parts of the river it is just two meters wide but as deep as two double decker buses. Some people say oh, the wow. water is 90% tears and sweat made up from the people who are trying to get fit before lockdown ends and they come out for summer. All we know is it's called the Strid. This is the Strid, a small stretch of river on the River Wharf near Wharf. Bolton Abbey. It's very fast flowing at the moment and swollen because of the recent rains we've had. Hold on, this, this, that's wild guys. So he said it's very, very deep, but it's not very wide. Uh, it, wow. So that's crazy. I mean, because it's you would think it's it's very narrow looking. So you would think you would just be able to if you fell in or something, you'd just be able to get across. I mean, obviously, it is a little bit fast moving, but uh, that's wild. OK, let's let's continue. So it doesn't it's not as menacing that what's menacing about this river is how calm it can get how placid and idyllic it looks. This? I did bring my, uh, my big telescopic... <laughs> it, it does not look that dangerous. Rod ...and the GoPro with its floaty bit on the back. And the plan was to attach the GoPro to the end of the fishing rod, come up here where it's rough and stick it in and see if we can have a look around, but it's running so fast and because of the recent rains, all the sides sloping. It's not a sharp drop, it's pretty sloped over. So one false move and I will just slip in there. I've got nobody with me, I don't have a life vest. So this experiment will have to wait for another time. It's in spate at the moment, so it's, it's running very fast and it gives you some idea of the power of this thing. There's a lot of water and it's a wide river, as you can see. And then it narrows down to this tiny little Right, this is what you're talking about, right? Right, uh, don't go too near edge, mate. That's how we get logged off. There's no... <laughs> <laughs> don't matter if you're best spear fisherman or free diver in the world, you're done for. Because the whole river, it comes down as a normal river should. And then it is forced through this narrow channel. And what the river does is it turns on its side and it has carved out the bottom. And so some people say it's as deep as two double-decker buses. And this isn't where it oh, ends. Wow. The river will be underneath me now because it's carved out so many little... Dude, that is so beautiful, though. What a beautiful area. Wow. Okay, so it sounds like basically why this is so dangerous is because it's coming along fairly calm and it's fairly wide upstream, and then it gets to this very narrow part, and... It just, it gets very deep and somehow the river turns on its side, which is pretty insane. I've never heard of that before. I don't even understand exactly what that means. But, so it sounds like because it's so deep, even though it's narrow, something about it may be sucking people under and then they're getting caught under rocks or something like that. That's, that's what I'm gathering here is why it's so dangerous. Um, and I can imagine because, I mean, this is so narrow here. People that don't know that this is dangerous, they're just seeing this and thinking, oh, not, not a big deal. And something happens when they get in and it just sucks them in or something. That's wild. Uh, man, nature is amazing. It really is. Sometimes, 
uh, in a dangerous way, but nonetheless, this is this is beautiful. My goodness, that's beautiful. Little tunnels and caves. Because of the pressure on it, it's like holding your thumb oh. over the end of the pipe. Okay. You let go and it flows out. You put, you restrict it, and the pressure is a lot harder, a lot faster. Wow. We'll have a look at the river on a calm day. It looks so unassuming, as you can see. But what's happening is wow. five foot below the surface, it is flowing very quick. So if your head's on the top oh. and your feet are dangling down there, the river will just catch your feet and it will just suck you down under. You oh. get little holes where stones will, will, will be washed around like in a washing machine. It'll just eat away at it. it is, it's terrifying. There are so <laughs> many It's terrifying. Here. It's, it's frothy. It looks alive. It looks dangerous. And because of the amount of bubbles as well, that affects your buoyancy. If you've got so many bubbles around you, all that is is air. So you're not as buoyant in frothy, bubbly water and lively water. That, coupled with the fact that it's a raging torrent underneath, man. There's been many lives lost to the Strid over the years. One of the most famous cases is in 1998, Barry and Lynn Collette were hiking along the wharf on the second day of their honeymoon when disaster struck and the water levels rose an estimated five feet in less than a minute because of heavy rains the previous night. Lynn was found six days later in West Yorkshire. Barry wasn't five found feet. until over a month later, 10 miles downstream. Wow. The oldest known legend of the Bolton Strid dates back to 1154 when a young man named William D. Romley attempted to leap across the Strid while out on a solo hunting trip. When he missed his mark, he was swept under never to be seen again. As the legend has it, William's mother was so grieved by the loss of her son that she donated the surrounding land to a community of Augustinian monks so that they would pray for her son's soul. Those monks went on to found the famous Bolton Abbey. This tale was immortalised by the poet William Wordsworth in his poem The Force of Prayer. This stride in place is called the Strid, a name which he took of yore. A thousand years hath it borne that name, and shall a thousand more. And hither is young Romley come, and what may now forbid, that he perhaps for the hundredth time shall bound across the strid. He sprang in glee, or what cared he, that the river was strong and the rocks were steep, but the greyhound in the leash hung back and checked him in his leap. The boy is in the arms of wharf and strangled by a merciless force, for never more was young Romley seen till he rose a lifeless corpse. Wow. I do a lot of wild swimming in random places on my channel, and I know that a lot of people see me and then feel inspired to go out and do it themselves. This is a warning that not all is what it seems. You might look at this stretch of river and think, oh, that's idyllic. I'll get in there and let it float me down. Right. I do yeah. the same. For example, if I've, there's only two warnings on these trees you have here. Wise in the past, please stand well back and beware slippery rocks. Wow. You know it's dangerous if they're literally putting up signs. Wow, okay. Nothing on this side. If I'd have camped, hammock camped, for example, up in them trees, I've woke up in the morning, I've found this place for the first time. It's calm, it's look, it looks Yeah, like, it? it looks great. Think, right. I'll get GoPro on my head. I'll jump in at the top and I'll let it take me all the way down. But that would be the last time I ever did that. So it's about safety as well. It's about knowing the rivers that you're going swimming in. Yeah, because very much so. it might look placid, calm and lovely on top, you do not know what's going on underneath. Because not only is there a, a rapid current underneath, you can have detritus, bits of trees and whatnot all flowing really quick underneath you. I don't want people to look at my videos and go wild swimming and not come back. It is the most dangerous stretch of river in the world. And look at it, unassuming. Yeah. And that's what makes it so dangerous. Because people think, oh, I'll just, it's only two meters or a meter in places. Right. I'll just jump over it, it'll be fun. Or I'll just go for a little dip in there to cool off, it'll be nice. Control, alt, delete, game over. Wow. I've got the utmost respect for this stretch of river. I do now, it's now I know funny. what's going it's on. Like something out of Lord of the Rings but it demands respect. That was cool. I'm glad I could show you the river stead. I'm going to start showing you little bits, different parts of my Yorkshire uh, and the things that I find interesting in and around the county that I live in. So stay tuned for that. I hope you're all doing well. Take care of yourselves and I'll see you on the next one. Au revoir.
All right, guys. He did a great job explaining that. I, I thought this was a uh, a very well thought out, um, you know, video. But uh, this is wild, guys. I mean, he's he's right. This is. I mean, look at that. It, it's it's very unassuming. Now, you. I mean, if I saw that, I would think, you know, I just hop in. Yeah, no big deal. And it's it's so idyllic. Just it's it's beautiful. And so it's just like that perfect place to kind of. You're just hiking around during the day, and especially during uh, during the summer, and you're like, "Oh man, I'm gonna jump in here and cool off," and and then you're never seen seen again, or at least alive. Um, that's wild. And so he it made sense when he really, you know, talked about how you know it's so deep that you know you're floating up top, your feet are in the bottom, the bottom water is going so fast that it just sweeps you off of your feet, basically. Best way to describe that. And you're just like, pulls you under, boom. And you're going so fast then that it's just, because it's like that river, all that water gets into this small area. And it's like, a, like you said, like the hose just shoots you through. And obviously that's going to, uh, you're going to get, you're going to hit some rocks and, and twist and turn and who knows what else. Obviously, on top of it, you just being underwater probably far too long. And I wonder if anybody has ever jumped in with, I, I don't know, like a life vest or something like that to, you know, test to see what happens. Eh, I probably wouldn't do that either. But um, this was interesting, guys. I, I love this type of stuff. Obviously, it's good to know this type of stuff if you're in the area or whatever. You obviously want to know this, but supposedly there's a uh, little, well, it looks like there's signs uh, around the area. So I'm sure people from the area probably all know about this. Uh, but if you're planning on visiting somewhere like this, yeah, you definitely need to know this type of thing just, you know, just in case. Um, but it, I can't believe, like, the story he was saying about the, uh, about the person who, uh, didn't survive this in 1998, I believe it was, or the, the couple. He actually said that the water rose five feet in less than a minute. How is that even possible? I understand a lot of, that's crazy. Five feet in less than a minute. Those people didn't stand a chance. That That's wild. It must have been, it must have been like, you know, really low. And then all of a sudden, just, and it's, they're done. That's wild. That's wild, guys. Um, never heard of anything quite like this, um, but I, I really enjoy learning about things like this. The the most dangerous, whatever it is, you know, the 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 most interesting, you know. Uh, for example, yesterday I learned that uh, you guys have a desert in the in the UK, which is insane. Who would have ever guessed that? Um, you know, and today I'm learning that you guys have supposedly the most dangerous stretch of river on earth in the UK. So I'd like to know what else, what else type of stuff like this, just unique stuff um, that I probably wouldn't discover on my own guys. So if you have any ideas of some interesting stuff that I possibly wouldn't discover on my own, but uh, is very unique, uh, please feel free to share that in the comments. I'd love to explore more stuff similar to this. Um, but yeah, guys, this was really interesting. You know, thank you so much for stopping by. Please click that like button. Don't forget to uh, leave your comments or suggestions about this video or others. And also, don't forget to uh, press that subscribe button to continue to follow me on my journey to discover my British and Irish ancestry. Until next time, guys. Peace.